Let's bring in Chris Sims, Football Night in America, Pro Football Talk Live co-host with Mike Florio. Um, where do you stand with this situation as the Browns move forward? Well, uh, you know, I know we've talked about it in the past. I, I'm one, you know, right off the bat as far as like, you know, Baker Mayfield. I, I think you make good points. You know, it is up to the organization, the head coach to evaluate it for, you know, what is best for our football team. And yeah, injuries. Oh, missed a week of practice because of COVID. Maybe that's not when you play the guy. You're right. Oh, that's right. He threw four interceptions in that game. You know, I, I mean, I, so your point is real there. There's no doubt about it. As far as Baker Mayfield and the Browns and that whole situation going forward, I think, you know, we talked about this maybe about a month ago. I mean, um, I expect Baker Mayfield to be back. But like the 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 red carpet or the you know the rose parade or, or the the honeymoon, it's over. We're we're at that point here now officially. There's no doubt whether they want to make it more of a competition between Case Keenum or bring in another QB to have them there as a backup plan. But I I don't think we're gonna see Baker Mayfield long term extension. No way. There's no way I would do that if I'm the Cleveland Browns. They they, they exercise their right to get the fifth year option and they gotta continue to evaluate this as they go forward. But uh, but do you pull the his... Band-Aid now, though, Chris? Because this is uh, still a really talented team. Let's right. say Deshaun Watson's yep. in play in Cleveland. Let's say yeah. Russell Wilson's okay. in play. Let's right. say Jimmy Garoppolo. Let's say uh, Aaron Rodgers. Like, you know, if you're the Browns, I think you got to look at big picture instead of going, well, we don't want Baker long-term, but at $18 million next year – that's not bad for a starting quarterback. And then at what point are you saying we're wasting another season or does it become a distraction for the Browns and Baker Mayfield with that contract ex uh, extension next year? Well, I, I, you know, again, if you have the chance to get a Watson or Wilson or somebody like that, then fine. That Then, okay, maybe I would think about, like you're talking about, ripping the Band-Aid off and going, okay, these are proven entities. We know what they are. We're not exactly sure of what Baker Mayfield is. Now, I'm not going to throw, but, but you better have somebody like that, I guess is what I would say, at least in my opinion. I'm not saying I'm right, but we have seen enough spurts through Baker Mayfield's career to know there is some talent and he can do some good things on the football field. We saw that at the end of the 2020 season. You know, they had the Chiefs on their heels in the playoff game. He played very good down the stretch last year. So there is at least some evidence to go, hey, wait, he can make some game-changing plays and throws and lead our team. There's some things to like there. I'm not trading him away for Jimmy Garoppolo. No, I'm definitely not. I'm going to play the angle of there's still more potential in Baker Mayfield's ultimate talent than a guy like Jimmy Garoppolo. Um, but, I again, you know, I, I don't think you just throw him overboard for, for, for anybody. There's issues there in Cleveland. You know, the guys doing the telecast last night explained it, I think, in a lot of ways, too. You know, what, what was the approach to that football game? What the hell was going on there? Baker Mayfield was beat up, no doubt about it. They obviously couldn't protect him. You know, Stefanski, one of the re I was one of those that was not a huge fan of the hire in Cleveland because I've always been underwhelmed by the passing offense of the Stefanski scheme. That's where I've never. And I look at that and go, okay, you know, the talent's okay in the passing game, but the scheme is underwhelming to me, and it's a little predictable. So I do give Baker Mayfield a little bit of the benefit of that too. Uh, but there's going to be some tough decisions that have to be made there in Cleveland because, as you know, as we all know, it's one of the most disappointing stories or teams in football this year. Would you rather have Jalen Hurts or Baker Mayfield? Oh, well – you got to have a you, if you're going to go Jalen Hurts, right? And I was I'm I and you know I I took an L with the with the Jalen Hurts thing before the year. I didn't make him one of my top forty quarterbacks. You know now uh, at that time I kind of was more evaluating it as they're going to try to make him a drop back quarterback and make him you know Philip Rivers in the the Los Angeles Chargers system. You know, but I, I've certainly am been proven wrong and. And 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 where I'm wrong is they went all in on, you know, he's a better runner than I thought he was. 
And, of course, they have a great offensive line. So they're playing a different style of football. You have to be committed to play a certain style of football, I think, with you have Jalen Hurts. It is going to be a Lamar Jackson-type offense. You're not going to get surgical, like, precision drop-back passing and a guy that's going to be capable of going 30 for 35 for 340 yards from Jalen Hurts. So that's where it's different. you got to figure out what kind of offense you're going to run. That's why it's a tough one, Dan. Traditional offense, I want Baker Mayfield. We're going to go all in on the all-running game and all of that. Then, yes, I'll, I'll go Jalen Hurts there. We're talking to Chris Sims, Pro Football Talk Live co-host and also contributor to Sunday Night Football. All right. Tampa Bay Buccaneers moving forward. You don't have Chris Godwin. You don't have Antonio Brown. Defense hasn't played up to its standards that we saw in the Super Bowl. Uh, Leonard Fournette's been out. You still have Tom Brady. Yeah. What do you think the playoff future of the Buccaneers is? Well, it's scary right now. It is. You know, again, they're they're a, a beautifully constructed football team, but I don't even know for as well constructed as they are. I don't even know if they can overcome this amount of injuries and and go for a Super Bowl run. So I do think like the threshold of injuries has hit a point where I go, ugh, it makes me look at them as a different football team. You know, Shaq Barrett, JPP not in there, Levante David, you know, secondary been banged up, have issues there. You mentioned all the guys on the offensive side of the ball. You know, so at full strength or close to full strength, I certainly still think they're the, one of the best teams in the NFC. But I need to kind of see how these next two weeks go as far as the health of their football team and where they can get by wild card weekend. I think that would make me dictate that. But, like, I'm definitely a little concerned right now, Dan. There's no doubt about it. Where maybe four weeks ago, but again, eh, I'm okay. They're going to they're gonna make a run and get this together. They're kind of just sleepwalking right now. They know what they're capable of. They'll step on the gas pedal. Uh, right now, I'm kind of like, eh, I'm not sure if they can do this with this group of guys here. Is Antonio Brown an issue or does he have issues? Because all of a sudden Tom Brady says he needs help. Well, did he need help just because what happened on Sunday or has he always needed help? And we keep kind of masking yeah. the issue here. I, I think so. Yes. I mean, I think he's always needed help. You've kind of always heard that from every place he goes, but it just kind of gets swiped under the rug and they, the next team gets him and goes, Oh damn, he works hard and he's talented. What? There was issues at the other place. I know oh, we haven't seen that, you know? And then of course it slowly comes about, oh, you know, again, I'm not trying to play psychologist here or anything like that, but it certainly seems at surface level or what we're seeing that there are issues there and the bucks feel burned. I mean, they just stuck their neck out there for a guy who had a fake vaccine card and be, made them a, a spectacle of the sport for a week and how they were going to handle it and put the NFL in a tough spot. And then here we go and you, you cause this, you know, distraction, disaster, uh, whatever you want to call it on Sunday. I've never seen anything like it. So, you know, I, I think there's a little bit of both there at play, I guess. He, you know, he, he does need help, uh, it, it seems like. But, hey, we, we had enough evidence to know that this was a possibility with him. And when you play with fire, you get burned sometimes. And their, their butt got burned on this one. Yeah. It's, it's just like you've got to get another chance. Yeah. You think so? Well, I just that, – that's the mean the million-dollar question. Uh, you know, we know talent talks in the NFL. And a lot of issues get, get, get pushed to the side when a guy can still get open or still play at a high level. To where that I would think the Bucks right now are kind of trying to play. They're trying to look if they can suspend him without pay or keep him on the roster. So a team like the Chiefs or the Rams or the Packers don't pick him up and get him for a six week, you know, clean slate and it ends up kicking their butt and ends up, you know, yeah. kicking their butt in the playoffs or the Super Bowl. I think that's what they're probably worried about now. Yeah, I think that Tampa that, you know, there's salary cap issues. Like how can they do it that minimizes even further damage and doesn't allow yes. him to get out of jail and go play for one of these other teams. Right. Um, right. Do you love Joe Burrow or do you love Joe Burrow? Oh, I love Joe Burrow. <laughs> I, I love him. I really do. And he's gotten better in the things that I questioned about. You know, first off, He's, he's the magic man. He just cooled Joe, whatever you want to call him. He's unbelievable. He's the natural. He really is the natural at the position. I had one question about him coming out in the draft, just overall arm strength. 
You know, that was the one thing I went and just went, man, I'm going to give him the edge on Herbert. Herbert has more physical ability. You know, Burrow can make all the throws, but, you know, I wish there was a little bit more power in the arm. All he talked about in the offseason was improving his arm, improving some mechanics to throw the ball with more power. You see that. You know, so he just has everything. He's got every club in the bag. He's so cool and calm under pressure. He's one of the most slippery SOBs in football in the pocket, work in the pocket. I mean, come on. The Bengals were a dysfunction, and we we're going, man, does Joe Burrow really want to go there? And the guy and the player are so awesome in both aspects that now we look at the Bengals as a different thing. We're going, man, this is the most exciting team we've seen in football. They got a bright future. <laughs> and that's all because of him. And that, that's why I love Joe Burrow. If you could start your franchise with one quarterback from the 2004 draft, Eli, Phillip Rivers, or Ben Roethlisberger. Oof, Knowing man. what you know now, yeah, mm. I, I'm gonna go with Big Ben. I am. I, I you know again. I, I'm a I'm a sucker for for talent. I guess more than anything, I respect the hell out of those other two guys. I do. But Big Ben to me uh, is just the best of the three. Period. You know, consistently playing at a high level. And I think the biggest thing too, Dan, that that where I give him the edge is just as, when. You know, he's capable of carrying the team when things aren't great, especially in his prime. I mean, he had some years there where you know, they went to the Super Bowl with, like, arguably one of the three, four, five worst offensive lines in the game and won the Super Bowl. That's really rare for that to happen, and that's because he was so gifted. You know, his ability to throw with people around him or, you know, take those little Fred Flintstone steps around the pocket and move around and pub and faking and people hanging on him and he's just, oh, I'm still going to throw it and get a first down. Uh, that's where I give him a little edge. It's a little different because I don't think he was necessarily studying the playbook or grinding film. I think he was, you know, he's a little bit more like just backyard football, but it's also why I love him and I, I would take him over the other two. Packers have any issues? Yes. I question, you know, one, the defense to a degree. I mean, how, how can you not? I know. Let's, let's forget the Vikings game last week without Kirk Cousins. You know, all the weeks before that, man, run game, pass game, teams have been having their way with the Packers defense. I question the Packers in a year where there's no great team in the NFL, and it's really going to come down to matchups in these playoffs. I just question – the high-end talent of the Packers. Uh, I'm one of the. I, I think the one of the few out there that I just go. They're good. I get it. They have Aaron Rodgers. He's the MVP. But can you really get to the Super Super Bowl by not messing games up, execution, and just riding Devontae Adams and Aaron Rodgers? That's where I don't know. They're going to end up playing teams in the playoffs here. Of course, are well coached, and I believe have more talent than them. And that's where I'm a little bit, you know. Not sure about if the Packers can really get to the Super Bowl and win the Super Bowl. I think what they do well, though, is they're mixing in the run a lot more. Yes. And, and, and that makes them I, – I love a team that gives you that option of running the football. Look back on the Buccaneers with Leonard Fournette last year. Yeah, like He was a right. real difference maker. All of those running backs that Brady had when he was in New England, you, you have to have that element there. You, you can't be one-dimensional, I don't think. You have to have a defense no. that has the ability right. to stop you when they need to, and I think being able to run the football, and, and I see that with Green Bay. Defense is getting some of their star players yeah. back. Bakhtiari's yep. coming back. you got two running right. backs with Green Bay. You have home field advantage, maybe a true home field advantage, and you know that's why I like Green I, Bay. I hear you. Yeah. I, I, I hear you there. And Jael Alexander, him getting back will be a huge thing. I mean, if they can get him back, I mean, he's, when healthy, definitely one of the five best corners in football. Zadaria Smith on the defensive side of the ball would be another huge addition because, again, like I said, I, 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 I question their top-end talent. And I think your offense, running game thing is a real thing. I mean, we've really only seen the Chiefs here in the last 10, 12 years be able to go and win a Super Bowl and do that without, like, a run game. Yeah. They're one of the few teams we've seen do that. And that, okay, but they have like some other really, really special attributes that have helped them overcome that. Uh, you're, you're right, though, with Green Bay. And then with Rodgers at the helm, they never waste plays. 
They're very unbelievable at executing, managing the football game, and they just don't make mistakes, especially on the offensive side of the ball, and that's what makes them tough to, to, to beat, uh, to your point, Dan. Thank you, bud. Good to talk to you again. Thank you, Chris. Thanks, guys. Be good. Have a good. Tell all those jerks I said hello. Hey, jerks, he says hello. Chris Sims, Pro Football Talk Live co-host and contributor to Football Night in America.